Hey guys, Jake Noaker here, and this time, King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, Algio MMA with the man himself, Bill Algio. Bill, yes, big fight next weekend. How you doing? Doing well. Yeah, can't complain. Ready to go. And, you know, like I said, Algio MMA, big training camp. Number one, how was camp? And number two, just break down the atmosphere of this gym a little bit. So, uh, well, your first question, how's camp going? I mean, I'm always training, and... 99% of the time I'm, I'm here. Um, and then as the fight gets a little closer, I just up the intensity, a little bit of the workouts, maybe add some conditioning. But the gym here is not just for professional fighters. I'm one of maybe two or three pro pros here. Uh, we cater just normal people, man. Just people who live around here, work around here, and just want to get a good workout in. Um, you'll see like a lot of people are surprised by how like family friendly this place is and just like the overall atmosphere is just more welcoming than most. So I think it's interesting because, you know, 30 minutes down the road, there's Team Taino, John Marquez MMA, John Webb MMA. There's so many like big UFC gyms. Why is it that you felt the need to open your own gym and kind of stray from that? I don't know what you want to call it. Mainstream path, if yeah. you will. Well, I opened up the gym before those guys were really doing their thing. Right. Um, so this was always my end goal was really to not use my accounting degree. So I wanted to just uh, be a part of this sport no matter what. And it just so happened that I was able to fulfill my dream of fighting in the UFC. And do you ever train with any of those guys like Petrosky, Sean Brady, Pfeiffer? Yeah, they've all been through here multiple times. Um, I recently just started training with uh, Pat Sabatini too, another UFC guy in the area. Um, you know, we were supposed to fight each other. Uh, I use the same example. It's kind of like when you're in high school and you have rival high schools, right? And it's like, oh, that, that guy, he's, you know, that guy. I never said that about Sabatini. He's such a sweetheart. Uh, but, you know, now that we're in the big leagues, it's like, yo, man, let's train together. He, you know, he said the same thing. It's like, yeah, no, let's be boys. All right, cool. We're both going to get each other better. And that's how it is. Um, and I know Eddie and Team Tino and all this. I've worked there plenty of times before, too. So it's all good. I mean, we all, you know, we all want the same thing. Just rep Philly uh, and improve the East Coast, you know, to the mainstream even more. Yeah, last time we were with uh, Pat Sabatini, he was talking about you and training with you. So it would have been a cool fight, maybe someday for, uh, you know, like the underground Rocky and Apollo Creed, yeah. the fight we never saw. Yeah, but we're, we're, we're beyond that now. We're making too much money. <laughs> I'm a fan. That's why I say that. Anyways, as a fan, another great one coming up, April 15th, TJ Brown, Kansas City. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that fight? What are your thoughts on TJ? Um, I know TJ. I've met him. Funny enough, we kind of had a, not an interaction of like a uh, malicious one. It was just like... We've seen each other at the the Fighters Hotel in Vegas quite a few times. And I'm looking at this guy. I'm like, man, he's a 45er? Pretty big, right? And uh, we get in the elevator together. And he's like, man, you're a 45er? You're pretty big. <laughs> and I was like, bro, I said the same thing about you. I didn't know he was actually fighting at 55 that weekend. So he's all like, you jacked know, up. jacked up. Yeah, of course. You look bigger at a bigger weight class. Um, but yeah, it's, it's funny how that, that kind of works. Like you see each other, you're kind of sizing each other up. And then we all want the same thing. We just want to improve. We want to win. We want to feed our families. And then, you know, you're always sizing each other up until, until you speak to each other. And then it's like, ah, oh, what's up, bro? Yeah, let's fight. All right, cool. Yeah, I'll fight you. And how do you think this fight goes down? Like from an outside perspective, very exciting fighters, very aggressive fighters. You have one of the most like interesting, um, just you know, unique grappling styles there is. How do you think this fight goes down? Um, I see him, you know, just being pretty. Um, I wouldn't call it basic, but it's pretty common, right? Of uh, just decent boxer trying to take me down, trying to use his jujitsu. But I'm used to that stuff, and I present a problem that not many can solve. And that's what I like, be awkward, be different. Therefore, you don't have the training partner that does the stuff that I do. Um, so I'm looking to just punch, kick, grapple, wherever it goes, I'm comfortable. But I'm going to keep that pace up and use my cardio and use my, uh, my eyes and my IQ. And why Kansas City? Why did you not hold off another week or another two weeks when they come back here in New Jersey for 288. I wish I had that kind of clout. You know, I wish I had that kind of pull. It's not like that. In fact, I wanted it extended because my sister got married two weeks ago. So I had some fun and now this weight, it's coming off, but I had to do a lot of work to get this weight off before and after. So I would have loved to fight in pretty much our backyard in, in Prudential Center an hour and a half away, but still where my friends and my family can sell that place out versus Kansas City. But it's, you know what? Let's just go, let's fight. That's what we're here to do. Are you bringing any sort of entourage with you? We got like 20 to 30 people, some guys from here, a um, couple of cousins, uncles. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a decent crowd there. And I'm going to change tones a little bit here just because this is a big fight coming up. You're going across the country to do it, and you've had, to say the least, a difficult camp. Um, 
your mother passed away, unfortunately, and I just need to ask you, how did this affect camp? And more so, what did this do for your motivation heading into this fight? Well, it affected camp because, I mean, I, I we were in the hospital for uh, a straight week, basically, just hoping that she would move a finger, move an eyeball. Um, it, it was the hardest thing I've ever done. Um, she had lymphoma, MCL was a stage four. We got the diagnosis. She was supposed to last another 10 years, um, but she lasted 10 months. And the last two months were just, were just terrible. You know, I just wanted to see her and I did. I spent more time with her as I ever, you know, as much as I possibly could. Uh, but man, she just, she passed and it, it was, it was devastating and it, it still is, but so I, I need to get better at communicating it without breaking down. Um, but I, it took her passing to realize, like, honestly, where my strength comes from, my toughness, uh, a, a ton of things. Um, so, yeah, that was, that was a tough week. Plus, you know, when you have, I mean, she's got six siblings, six or seven siblings, a ton of cousins. So there's a ton of people at her house, my dad's house. And so, you know, how do you feed like 50 people in a house? It's just pizza and wings. So that the diet... We didn't care about food. We didn't care about anything at that point. So we just eat whatever, drink whatever. Um, so that put a little, um, I don't know, lull in my training, if you call it. But again, who cares? There's more important things in training than fighting. Um, and yeah, I'm going to miss her dearly every day, and I do. Safe to say this fight is for her? Absolutely, yeah. And on a, on a more positive note, you also had a child yeah. during this camp, or maybe before this camp, and this is your first... UFC fight as a dad, so congratulations. Are we gonna get some like Bill Algio dad strength in there? Uh, I hope so. I'm hoping that's a real thing. Um, I don't know if that's um, so much positive. I mean, you definitely lose sleep, which isn't the best uh, for for an athlete. But you definitely have something more to fight for, and and you know, amount to feed, which does put things in perspective. Um, so it's definitely more motivation, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping I make him proud. I, th I think I will. I, I think you certainly will. My, if my, I'm proud of my dad, and if he was a UFC fighter, I'd be even more proud. So let me let me just ask you: Is he going to train someday? You have any plans for that? Yeah, we'll baby him into it. Um, we'll get him in everything and just see what sticks. You know, that I'm not going to be one of those dads that makes him do anything. You know, um, he's going to be doing something physical, that's for sure. He's not going to be at home just playing video games all day. But um, there'll be a reward for something physical in here or in soccer or swimming or whatever. We already have him swimming at four and a half months. That's adorable. Uh. And, you know, I know you're very focused on TJ. And if you can at all look past it, assuming everything goes well, assuming you're all healthy and everything, what's the ideal remainder of your 2023 look like in terms of fighting? Uh, well, so I have this one and then one more in my contract. So win this one and then get a nice opponent. I don't care who it is, get another W and then raise my stock and see what I'm worth after this. So I don't even have this question written down. I just I just want to ask, you're two and one in your last three. Yeah. And your last fight, it, it was a very interesting fight because it was one to one going into the third. Yeah. And then the third round you spent with him on your back, but you outstruck him, outlanded him. I was telling Gabby, our director of photography, it was one of the most exciting rounds ever and you had your back taken yeah. and they didn't give it to you what were your thoughts on that honestly i was just happy to not have my arm uh punched or kicked anymore literally the first five seconds of that round he threw a kick he broke my arm i knew it i didn't show it uh i even threw it too because i'm like all right might as well use it but i stood a little taller and i was pretty happy he took me down because i didn't want to get that arm kicked again so i just put on a brave face and i, I led with it he took me down. I'm like, all right, you're not going to choke me. I know how to get out of this, right? So I did. And then I'm like, all right, I'm going to hang here and use my good arm and just punch as hard as I can. And that's what I did. And he was talking talking some smack behind me, like, you hit like a girl or something like that. And I was like, that's not what your mom says. I, I, you don't know what to say. My ears bleeding. I got his blood on me. I got my blood. And I'm just punching away and hoping I can just, like, chip away at a decision there. It was fun. They got to find a way to mic you guys up someday. That would be, it'd be great. Um, so, Bill, before we get out of here, man, I just want to give you the opportunity. Tons of fans, you know, family, friends, a whole gym behind you. I want to give you the opportunity. Is there anything you'd like to say to everybody? The mic is yours. I just appreciate being here, man. I appreciate this is my career. It's not really a job to me. This is this is fun. This is what I do for fun. This has always been a long-term goal, and uh, I really feel lucky every day just being able to teach for a living on top of being an athlete for a living, too. It's, it's fantastic, and... You know, um, it's corny, but, you know, stick to your goals and 
work every day to accomplish them or don't be miserable. <laughs> it's up to you. I love that, man. Following my dreams, following your dreams. And uh, next week we get to see it pay out in Kansas City. April 15th, ESPN Plus. Do not miss it. Bill Algio, getting that dub.